Okay, picking up where we left off, we can see that we have named our APs the way we want it to. We put things on flex connect mode and we IP the APs just so it's more convenient for management stuff. From here, what we want to do is we want to go down to flex connect groups and we're just going to create one. I'm going to call this test lab. Flex Connect Group, if I can type, there we go. And go apply. And then inside here, what I want to do is tell it which APs to use. So we just either enter in the MAC address of the AP or we can check this box and just go ahead and add both of these guys. So now that's done, we can go over to wireless LANs here and we can create a simple wireless network. I am just going to call this WLC WPA PSK because that's what we need for CCNA. So the profile name could be anything you want, but I recommend naming it the same as your SSID. And then the ID could be anything from 1 to 512, but uh, I'm just going to use 1 because that's uh, sequential there. And we'll go apply. And then from here, we just start entering in what we need there. So we want to enable the SSID or nothing's going to work. And uh, we can mess with radio stuff, but we don't need to get too deep into that for the CCNA. The interface doesn't really matter in a FlexConnect connection, so we're just going to leave that. And we can choose if we want to broadcast the SSID or not. Generally speaking, you want to... Um, broadcast your SSID unless it's uh, enterprise uh, wireless and then you're pushing the SSID for something like ICE or group policy so you don't need to worry about it. It's more just to make sure that users aren't accidentally clicking on uh, wireless networks they can't join more than any kind of security thing. So anyway we'll click on security And we can see our options here. So depending on your code, you may or may not have WPA3. Uh, 8.5 does not support WPA3, so we're just going to show you WPA2. So what you want to do is just scroll down. And you can see here that WPA2 is selected. And that it's going to be using AES as its encryption, which is fine for our purposes. Then for the authentication, we uncheck 802.1x and check PSK. Then we just go ahead and enter in the key. There is not a confirmation there, so make sure you're typing it right. And from here, we don't need too much more, but layer 3 is where you do your captive portal stuff. And AAA is if you wanted to integrate with Cisco ICE or another server. The QoS tab is for the quality of service. Um, now this is where the exam topics get a little bit murky. So if we click on the exam topics and scroll down. So for example, it says configure the components of a wireless LAN for including such things as security settings, QoS profiles, and advanced wireless LAN settings. Or the exam topics don't go into what that means there. So it's possible that they want you to go really deep into QS profiles, but it's more likely they just want you to know what it is. Anyway, from here, the main thing to keep in mind is that you'll usually just keep this at silver, which is best effort. If it's voice traffic, you'll probably just use the platinum, or platinum class. If it's video, then you'll use gold. And if it's benign traffic, uh, like say BitTorrent or something you want to treat less, then you can just use bronze. From here, you can go ahead and adjust the actual QoS settings, and you can do things such as call mission control if you're tying this into uh, wire, um, a wireless voice network. Policy mapping we don't need to get into, but basically this allows you to treat uh, particular clients uh, differently. And advanced. In here, there's probably not a lot you need to worry about. The main one here is the DHP address assignment. 
This is going to make it so that the client has to get a DHB address to work. If you try a static IP, it's going to fail. And many of these other options we'll talk about uh, as I get around to making like a nice video. But for example, if we want uh, the WLC to better understand what clients are connecting, we can choose DHP and HTTP profiling. And this is just going to help it identify the user. If we wanted to use things like Cisco Umbrella, we could do so, and but we're good for now. But um, specifically for Flex Connect, we need to scroll down, and we need to make sure that local switching is enabled. So now all we need to do is go back to Wireless and our Flex Connect group. And we need to go to Wireless LAN, enable VLAN support. And in my case, my access points are on VLAN 320. This is going to be the native VLAN for the trunk. And then we can say which, um, and then we can say which VLAN or, um, which SSID is mapped to which VLAN. The SSID I just created is WLAN ID 1. That was that uh, first number that we selected. And then we picked the VLAN there. So if I go ahead and type in 311, which is my server network, and go add, I have to click apply first. And let's try that again. And go add. What's going to happen now is when I connect to this uh, SSID, it's going to dump me into this VLAN on my local switch. The idea here is that because the AP is not sending everything to the controller, we need to tell it which VLANs and uh, things like ACLs we care about. So if we had several VLANs for SSIDs, we can go ahead and do this. Otherwise, we could use something like a Cisco ICE server to dynamically allocate the VLAN. So with that out of the way, Okay, so in my test host, I can go ahead and connect. And I already had the PSK saved from when I was testing another scenario. So I'm going to hop over to my... So if we hop back over to our WLC and go monitor, we should see one client. And if we click on the client section, we can see that I am on my 311 VLAN. And if we click more, we can get a bit more information. So in here we can see things like uh, the client MAC address. So here we can see things like the so here we can see things like the IP address of the client, the MAC address of the client. Um, we can verify that it's local switching, which means uh, Flex Connect. Remember, don't get confused with uh, the local mode, which is the CapWAP. And we can see a bunch of troubleshooting information. If we wanted to, we can do a link test to see the quality of the connection. And we could also uh, remove the client if we wanted to kick off the client from the WLC. One thing I'll show you is if we back out of here and log back in, we'll go back to the dashboard page. And this is just a prettier version of the graphics. So, or this is just a prettier version of the dashboard. So if we click on clients here, so if we click on clients here, we can see uh, the information put in a much more prettier fashion. We can see that where it is on the authentication. If we didn't get a DHP address, it would stop here to help us know um, where to troubleshoot. It lets us know it's a flex connect and that it's going from, and that it's a wire connection to get from the AP to the WLC. It gives us a visual representation of the connection. So the client goes to the AP on flex connect and then from there, the uh and then from there uh any connect it gives us a visual representation of the client state uh, to help us troubleshoot gives us our q and s summary so all in all it's a nice uh much nicer page to look at And with that, you have a working wireless lab that you can play with for your CCNA. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that um, 
Wireless is a very, very deep topic there. Uh, it goes right up to the CCIE level. So there's a lot of features here that we didn't uh, get close to looking at. But as uh, I build out these series there, I'll be ta making more CCMP uh, and CCI videos on uh, wireless and the other tracks. So um, stay tuned if that interests you. Till next time.